morning everybody, I am Abby Elizabeth and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. You know, we all came out of a false religious system, whether or not we realize that to be so. Even if we profess to be atheists, we were raised up in the education system, and the education system is of the false religion. And for that reason, we have many misunderstandings about what is pleasing unto God. Yesterday I made a video, and I'll link that video in the description box for you below, but I made a video talking about, in one particular part, I talked about praying to God and asking Him to um, provide for us, to heal us, and I gave an example in that video of the kind of prayer that we would like to say. And it became apparent to me that some of you misunderstood and you thought that you should write down that prayer, write it in a book, and then repeat it daily. And this is something that I want to address in particular today about prayer. How do we pray as Christians? Well, we can understand one thing about prayer, and I, there's one particular aspect I'm going to speak about today. There's other things, but today I'm going to talk about vain repetitions. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now this is really clear. It's really simple. Jesus Christ is being very, um, very clear about what God likes when we pray. And he doesn't like us to do what the heathen do, which is to repeat things over and over again. And we can see this apparent in particularly the Roman Catholic religion, where people have prayer beads and they repeat prayers based upon what bead they're on or, or something to that effect. And that is a practice of the heathen. Prayer beads are something that relates to heathen religion. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ or Christianity. Jesus Christ didn't hand out prayer beads. The reason why people do this kind of thing is because they want to please God and they're not looking into his word to see how to do so. And there's a number of forms that vain repetitions can take. And in particular today, I want to speak to you, my sisters, about prayer journals. Now, this is something that I hadn't really heard of until pretty recently, um, that people had a practice of keeping a prayer journal. And while I certainly think that it's a good idea sometimes to keep a journal in order to um, know what you're doing, to keep track of where you're headed, to be able to reflect upon things that have happened before. And it's also uh, a worthy thing to do, to make a list and a book of people that you're praying for and why you're praying for, or even things that you've asked God for yourself. However, a prayer journal should not be writing down prayers of other people and repeat to, for the purpose of repeating those prayers. And this is something that comes from the, the uh, Roman religion, where people want to, ha they want to hear something that is pleasing unto God, and they repeat it. And even if that thing is pleasing unto God, to repeat it and expect it to have some kind of magical power, because it it was acceptable unto God when someone else did it. But then to repeat it as if, oh, okay, that worked for them. Now I'll repeat that over and over and over again. That's a vain rep repetition. You see, when we've been baptized in Jesus' name and had our sins remitted, and when we're filled with the Holy Spirit of God or we're waiting for it, what God wants from us is to be in relationship with him. He wants us to talk to him. He's not the kind of deity 
that expects vain oblation, that wants things like ritual. Ritual is something that existed in the Old Testament when the ancient Israelites were commanded to do things that pictured what Jesus Christ would fulfill. So the various dietary laws, the various animal sacrifices, and the, the rituals that existed for the ancient Israelites had to do with creating a picture of what Jesus Christ would fulfill. For example, the Passover holiday, it's a holy day to, to Israelites, to ancient Israelites. So when they did that, they were going through something and performing something that would later be manifested in the life of the Messiah. So when Jesus Christ poured out his blood at the cross, that was the lamb that was slain so that the, the destroying angel would, would pass over people. So when we're redeemed by the blood of the lamb, by being buried with him in baptism, covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, then we have partaken of that Passover. And we are no longer obligated to keep the ritual that was a picture of what would be fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, not one jot or one tittle shall be taken from the law until all things be fulfilled. And when he fulfilled things, then what Christians do became different. It was different what we do. So Christians don't celebrate the Passover festival. We do partake of um, the, the, the bread, the unleavened bread and the new wine the wine as a remembrance of Jesus Christ and what he did. And he did command us to do that. But that's a very different thing than the rituals of, of um, taking a lamb into your house and, and then killing that lamb and, and then, um, you know, eating it and, and so forth and putting the blood on, on the, the doorpost. That's something that was a picture. So the reason why I went into all that, and that's not what this video is about, is that there are many people who don't know what is pleasing unto God. And they've come out of a religious system that has taught them many things that are incorrect. And in particular, I'm talking about ritualized prayer. And sometimes people take the idea of a prayer journal and they turn it into a ritual. So they might hear someone say a prayer, as I gave an example, of how we ought to pray in a video yesterday. They might copy it down and write it in their prayer journal and repeat it. And this is not what I mean when I advise people to have a journal. We can use a journal in order to write letters unto God. And some, for some of us, that's a very effective way of, of expressing our thoughts unto God. It gives us the ability sometimes to to be clear about what it is that we're saying. That's a very different thing than repeating what someone else has said in a prayer journal and then, and then using that as your uh, template for your relationship with God, because there is no template. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7, to not use vain repetitions. Now, let's read a little bit further. Be ye not therefore like unto them with your vain repetitions. For your father knoweth what need, things you have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our father, which art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in, in earth as it is in heaven. Excuse me. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now he just got done telling people not to use vain repetitions. But what do people do? They take this example 
of how we ought to pray, which is what Jesus said. He said, after this manner, or in this way, in this manner, therefore pray ye. So this is an example of how we pray. It is not, he did not mean for people to take this passage of the Bible and repeat it, and particularly not to repeat it using prayer beads, which is something that the heathen do. So in the Catholic Roman religion, what people do is they'll repeat this prayer over and over and over again, counting it um, according to, to the beads. And this is a vain repetition. And Jesus said, when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Finally, I went, for this particular portion of what I'm speaking about here, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 1. And let's read what God has to say about rituals. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Plead for the widow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they, pardon me, though your sins be as scarlet, though they shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. So, of course, Isaiah was speaking about prayer and ritual unto the ancient Israelites. And the reason why God was offended by their religious rituals is that they were not walking after his precepts. They were not obedient to his commandments. So all the rituals that they did were meaningless because they were not done in sincerity. You see, when we pray, what is pleasing unto God is when we're opening our heart before him. It's a form of communication. It's not a ritual. But a lot of people um, who are young Christians fall into ritual because they want to please the Lord. And that's what happened yesterday when I gave an example of how it is that we ought to pray when we're looking for healing, when we're looking for provision. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about where that prayer came from. When we read the Word of God daily, the Word gets into us. And we start to understand who God is. And we also start to understand the kind of conversations that his people have with him. For example, and I'll just give you an example of this. If we go to Psalm, and there's a lot of prayers in the Psalms. Um, let's, uh, pardon me, let me find the, the place I was looking here, let's go to Psalm 51. So Psalm 51 is a prayer of David after he had committed a grave sin. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, Acc according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Now this is another thing sometimes that people do is they will repeat psalms as if they're their own prayers. They'll read the scripture in a, in a um, ritualized manner thinking that that is a prayer that God will hear. But the thing is the scripture isn't given 
to us to be used in that way. It's given to us to give us understanding about who God is and what's pleasing unto him. So when we read the scripture, we see David's heart condition, his condition of repentance, and about how he spoke to the Lord. So this also is an example unto us of the right relationship between a Christian and their God. So God doesn't want us to repeat someone else's prayer. He wants to hear our prayer. He wants to hear from you. He wants to know what your burdens are, what your worries are, what your fears are, what you would like to become. He wants to hear how you want to be pleasing unto him, how you want forgiveness, if forgiveness is something that you need. If He wants to hear that you want understanding, and he wants to hear you ask for it from him. He does not want to hear you repeating the prayer of someone else who asked for understanding. Because it's about relationship. It's about that God sent his only begotten son into the world to speak his word, to manifest who he is, and to redeem mankind from their sins by pouring out his innocent blood at the cross. And when God resurrected his son into eternal glory, we now, in the name of Jesus Christ, those who are in his name, by being baptized in his name, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we speak to God. We've been restored into relationship with him, and he wants to hear from us. So, you know, I understand why people make these kinds of mistakes, because this is what they've heard all their life. So they might see, or even I've spoken to people at times about keeping a journal or writing down things that, that we might want to then bring to prayer. So I've done this. Often when I've been confused I've or, or, or worried about something and not really sure what is happening, sometimes it's very helpful to me to write down my thoughts and concerns in a journal, but that's not my prayer. That is me sorting out what's going on in my life so that then I can put the journal aside and get on my knees and seek the Lord and pour out my heart to him. Now, I also have a, a journal where I write down various prayer requests that people ask me for because a lot of people ask me to pray and I, I'm an old lady. Sometimes I don't remember everything and I don't want to lose track. So I have a, a book in which I write down prayer requests or people that I'm um, that the Lord puts on my heart. I also write down in, in that book um, various things that, that I might want to take to the Lord in prayer myself, but it's not a substitute for my prayers. It's not something that I think has any power. It's just a list. Basically, it's a list so that I can keep track. It's not some kind of um, ritualized thing that God values. And he values that I want to keep track, and he helps me to keep track. But what he wants is for me to talk to him. And when we talk to him from our own heart, then we will hear from him. If we're trying to repeat what someone else has said, and we're expecting to hear from him, what did God say about this? In Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, and let's, let's, um, I'm just going to find what he said about this. Um, pardon me. In verse 15, he says, And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. How we demonstrate our love for God is by being obedient to his commandments. For not obedient to his commandments, 
then he's not going to hear our prayers, unless they're prayers of repentance, of course. The, the hypocritical prayers of the heathen who think that they can go to a, a building and, and uh, get on their knees and, and go through, through beads and, and repeat uh, parts of the scripture as if they're sincere and heartfelt prayers, these are vain oblations and God hates them. So we don't want to partake of that. And Jesus said in Matthew 6 that, that we're not to do as the heathen do because they think they will be heard for their much speaking. So we don't want to write down prayers and repeat them in a book. We don't want to hear someone else's prayer and imitate it, because those things are not our heart. And what God wants is us. He wants to hear from us, our heart, what we're thinking and feeling, what we're worried about, what we care about, what we hope for, what we long for, our needs, such as our needs for wisdom, our needs for strength, our wisdom for guidance, our, our need for greater faith. He wants to hear those words as they come forth from our heart. And when we read the word of God, we will see many examples of godly people having a relationship with God. And when we participate in that by reading it, it will help us to know how to pray. But it is not to be repeated as if it's our own prayer, the way that many people do by, for example, repeating Psalm 23 or repeating uh, parts of Matthew chapter 6. I hope I've clarified for those of you who are young in the faith the difference between what kind of prayer a Christian should offer unto God. It should be from your heart. It should be offered willingly. It shouldn't be ritualized. And we shouldn't necessarily talk a lot even. We can talk a lot. He wants to hear from us. But he also knows what we have need of. Our prayers are also to glorify him. And if you notice what Jesus said in Matthew 6, is he opened the prayer by glorifying God's name. And he closed the prayer by glorifying God. So let's read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy be thy name. So we enter into prayer with God by recognizing that he is holy and mighty and wonderful. We approach him humbly. We glorify him. It's not about, it's not about glorifying him with things that other people do. It's our heart's desire to glorify him. And we close our prayers in the same way. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we glorify God when we enter into prayer and we glorify God when we exit the prayer. And the things that we ask for in between are things such as for his kingdom to come for his will to be done in our lives, for us to manifest his will, for us to be instruments of his peace, for us to be provided for our physical provision, our bread, and our spiritual provision, our spiritual bread, which is found in God's word. And, and we ask God to forgive us things that we do, and we ask him to teach us how to forgive people who harm us. You see, this is about relationship. When Jesus Christ gave this example of prayer, it wasn't so that people would repeat it over and over and over again. And I'm sure that, you know, now when God sees people doing that, that, that it's just as vain to him as when the ancient Israelites went before him celebrating the, the various rituals that he commanded when they were full of iniquity and sin. God wants your heart. He wants you to know him, and he wants you to pour out your heart to him because he's your father now, if you're a Christian.
May the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. Feel free to email me. My email is always in the description box below or to make a comment. And may you be blessed in Jesus' name as you seek him, yourself, with a sincere heart. For verily, when we do this, this is what he hears. And of course, we ask for things in Jesus' name because Jesus said that anything you ask in my name I will do it. So when we ask the Father things in the name of Jesus Christ, we are in Jesus Christ. And when we say, Father, I ask you this in Jesus' name, it's because we're in him, we're in his will, and the prayers that we're offering unto him are pleasing unto him because it's not about glorifying ourselves, getting the things that we want, imposing our will upon other people. It's about being in his will ourselves. When we ask in Jesus' name, that's what it means. Because Christians are obedient unto God. And the things that we ask for are in accordance with the commandments of God and the words that are written in the Holy Scripture. The only way to really have a very um, uh, devoted and holy life in prayer is is to be abiding in God's word. When you do that, what will be in your heart and come forth from your mouth in prayer will be pleasing unto the Lord. So I, again, I, I pray that this message has been edifying to you today, those of you, my sisters who are listening, and, and I look forward to hearing from you if you reach out to me. May your day be blessed as you continue in the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen.